Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. You know what sucks? Oh, lots of things do. What do, what are you thinking of? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean the vacuum. <laughs> I'm when I'm working so hard and I'm so excited and I've got a goal and then somebody just bails. Just says, you know what? I quit. Have you have you been there? I've been there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just it does suck. You know, it's it's a part of our situation that in any musical organization, um, kids are going to quit. Um, I've even on a higher level, if you want to call it a higher level, um, I've even subbed for an entire semester for a band program in which the assistant band director during Christmas break just quit without telling anybody and oh, just wow. left. Moved. Yeah. The head director went over to the house because I kept calling in sick because they were trying to draw the last of their pay. And so right. I finally went over to see if he could help anything. And no one answered the door and he kind of peeked through the window and all the furniture was gone. <laughs> empty. <laughs> it was empty. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just kids, but yeah, people and people quit on us, man. Um, so but, you know, yeah. <laughs> let me ask Mike, what do we do when people quit on us? Well, I don't know. I can tell you all the phases I've gone through. Um, you know, in our programs, if you have, let's just use round numbers. Let's say we start 40 kids each year as beginners. It's a smaller school. We have 40 beginners. If you have 40 beginners, this is very generic, but you can expect out of 40 beginners, maybe out of 40 beginners, uh, 30 will make it to seventh grade. And then out of that, maybe 15 will make it to freshman year. And at a small school, if you can get four or five seniors, that would be awesome. You know what I mean? So if you think about it, there's actually more kids quitting than staying. Um, I'll tell you this, at my Wiley Band program, we would start some years 160 kids. And usually we had okay. 30 seniors. Think about that. So 160 I had kids. never <laughs> stopped to put those kind of percentages or ratios together before. Yeah, so kind of think in terms of like we'd start 160 and then 80 would make it to seventh grade, and then 40 would make it to their freshman year, then maybe 30 or so to their senior year was kind of our normal numbers. But if every kid stayed, you know, I would have had 640 kids in the high school marching band. <laughs> you know, and that's another so, problem. <laughs> yeah. So think about it. You know, so kids do quit and it's it's for various reasons. Sometimes they just don't like me. You know, sometimes they just don't like playing their horn. No, oh, Mike. But sometimes they just don't like whatever. Sometimes they have other activities that they enjoy more, you know. Um, but I always try to think of it in that context that, you know, if I have 160 kids in my high school marching band and if every kid had have stayed have been 640, then think of all those kids that quit. It can't be just happening to me, you know? So right. I would talk to other directors and they would say, yeah, same thing. You know, the kids quit. Um, and it does suck, but, uh, there's some things to think about for we as directors. I think I went through, uh, three distinct phases in how to handle this. One is that a very young teacher, I begged a kid would quit and I'd call them up and talk to their parents and I would beg and I would make whatever concessions and, oh, please, 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 please be in my marching band. Please help me out. You can help me. Out. And I mean, I begged, I begged. And you know what? That usually turned out really bad because <laughs> they kind of had, they had me over the barrel. So I can't be there for these rehearsals, but Mr. Lenny, you begged me to be here and I've got to go. To... You know, so I went through that phase for a while. Then I went through a phase of where uh, I just didn't care. You know, they come. I quit band, and I and I, I'd stop. I don't. I don't care. I don't care why. Just, just leave. I, I hate to say that, but I just went through that phase because I'm so tired of begging and being turned right. on that I just didn't care. And then I finally evolved many, many, many years later into where it was like trying to address the problem. You know what I mean? To to figure out what is going on. You know, um, I, I guess when I say would most directors they'll find out a kid's quitting. Um, generally through other people. Isn't that interesting? Okay. You know what I mean? Because like it'll be summer band. And you say, hey, where's where's John at? Oh, he quit. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> yes, the other good kids. Good to know. Like, yeah, good to know. Yeah, we had a spot for him and everything. But my advice, big time advice, do not engage with the students who are there about why or where or when this student quit. Just thank them for the information. 
just say, hey, uh, awesome. Thank you for that heads up. And then it's your job to go figure out what happened. But boy, it's a endless vicious cycle to go. Hey, does anyone know why John quit? You know, because the worst case scenario it makes everyone else in the band think, hey, maybe I should quit too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, we're here we're discussing quitting, you know, but if they do just kind of in front of the band, just kind of, oh, well, thanks for that information. Yeah, I'll follow up on that. Don't worry about it. Um, and kind of go that direction, you know, on it. Um, but I would, that would be my number one word of advice. You know, the other word of advice is do not ever beg children to be in your program. Never beg them. Never make extra super concessions. And because, uh, it, just for me personally, I, I can say it never worked out. There's not a kid I begged to be in band that was there for more than another six months. And then they finally decided that they, they'd already made up their mind. They were just, for whatever reason, they decided to stay because I begged. <laughs> so uh, I kind of think of it this way. when After you've kind of investigated, and I get a hold of John and I say, John, can I talk to you about this? And usually they'll say, yeah, sure. So, so when a kid comes in and says they're considering quitting, Think about this for a second. They're considering quitting. They've not reached that decision. And they usually want you to talk them into staying or kind of help them with the decision. There's times I've talked with a kid and I've helped them decide to quit. <laughs> it's like they explain their whole situation because, well, it really seems like, you know, you're not going to be able to do marching band. There's no way this is all going to work out. Said, are you still going to be in my jazz band? You know, are you, will you still sign up in the spring maybe for concert band? Um you can help them come to a, a decision, um, especially when the, it's scheduling conflicts. Because sometimes right. they'll just simply tell you, "Said I can't be in band because I've got to take this certain course," you know. And it's like, here we go. You know, now we're to trying to figure out with counselors and so forth. Okay. So here's if you've noticed my intent blank stare. It's not that I'm not listening to you, but I'm starting to hear in your conversation. Maybe part of the evolution was realizing it wasn't personal. Oh, yeah. In the majority of the cases. And sometimes things just don't work out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've all been in jobs, uh, organizations, relationships, whatever, that went well for a while and then didn't work out. That's, that's a part of life, man. <laughs> right. So sometimes it's, it's unbelievably cruel to emotionally twist a kid into staying in your program just just because you're begging them to do it. Right. You know. And so I'm going to say things that I I probably can say this easier than you could say it if you'll allow me. Check your ego. Not everything's about you, Mr. Teacher, Director, Conductor. They may have other things going on. And let's be on, you're talking about percentages. Mm -hmm. It sounds like 50% 50 after beginners and then smaller percentages. But how many did you say 30 out of 160 might be seniors? Yeah. By the time you're finished with the process, at least 75% of your beginners have quit band. You know, so, so usually if you start with 160, I'd be excited to have 30 seniors. So 130 it, of them quit over the years. So if we accept those numbers... It doesn't mean they dislike us, but it doesn't mean as much to 130 as it does to me. Correct. And that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. And and if we look at, you know, I, 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 I one of my things I've done in the past is talk to young people in schools and, you know, all these junior high football players think they're going to be in the NFL mm -hmm. until you break it down and show them how many people get from junior high to high school because there's still just 11 people starting no matter what. Right. And so by the time you get through high school transition, did you go to D one? Did you, it's a very small percentage of the people that start in junior high that actually wind up doing that as a profession. Right. So different, but same. We all think everybody should be, I think because we love what we do so much. We hope people get excited and want to do that too. But the reality is between parents and life goals and practicality of, I have to, I think you said this, or, you know, so we, we, we get upset with counselors a lot, but the reality is if you're going to be a physicist, you probably have to take some science classes. Right. And the counselors, it's, a lot of times their hands are tied. 
you right. know, what do they call but them? My point is, yeah. it's not about you. They're leaving your program, but maybe, ah, gosh, here we go, Mike. Rain me in. Yeah, <laughs> it's our it's it's our program. It's not just you. Yeah, Mister Mister Teacher. And I would say with uh with working with these students, we mentioned counselors. They're they're doing what they have to do to survive as well, just like we are. And sometimes I think they call them onesies. Onesies are where they can offer a, a certain class during one period of the day because of the size of the school. There might be only one trigonometry class or elementary analysis class. Um, so I, I always try to be very proactive with my counselors to try to eliminate some of that, to get with them and say, hey, do you realize that, you know, the trigonometry class is almost all band kids who have dropped band their junior year. So is there any possible way we could, you know, that's right. when you get, to, that's when it's okay to beg. <laughs> so you're begging, sure. so, hey, can, can y'all make this happen for me? But you're not putting the kid in that spot. You're not begging the kid. No, no, to make that's a choice. exactly right. It's two. It's adults talking to each other. And with the students, if they've come in and just said they're considering quitting, so Mr. Lenny, I, I'm think I'm thinking about not taking band next year. Okay, um, I try to be really firm and calm and encouraging, you know, and show them how they can maybe make it work and how I can help by maybe talking to some people. Um, you will almost, isn't that a terrible phrase? Almost always, you'll almost always retain that student. And it's not begging, it's just working with them to figure out how they can make it work, you know, and uh, they're actually just asking for help is what they're asking for. And sometimes I think human nature is the path of least resistance. So if I just quit, then that takes care of my problem instead of sitting down and saying, how can we make it work? Right. And in fact, with our, with my programs, I always had a little, uh, if, I guess probably today they do it on Google Forms, but I had a little slip of paper that at the end of the year, which was much more accurate than anything the counselors had on their scheduling sheets. It had basically their name, the grade next year, what instrument they played, and are you going to be in band? Check yes or no, just like those old notes. Check yes or no. And it had do no not say way maybe. Off. Yeah, that's right. There was no maybe yes or just check it. And uh, and I promised him, I said, if you, unless you come to me and talk to me, if you say no, I'm not going to reach out to you because that's your business. So I wanted them to be honest with me. I said, if you right. check no, I'm not going to be at your doorstep going, how oh, come you're not going to be in band next year? You know, I'm not going to sick kids on you. Um, but I just want to have a good count for what's going to happen. Um, because I found out over my experience that if you ask them to write down why they're quitting band, they'll never tell you that. Uh, never. They, they'll hardly ever tell you the truth. Um, well, almost so, never. Yeah. So they're kind of like, uh, sometimes they just don't want to hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of like, how many people have you seen band director jobs? Well, I'm leaving this job because I want to be closer to my family. So I'm going to move to East Texas or move to West Texas. No, it's because I hated the principal. Right. <laughs> or they've been non-renewed. <laughs> and so, so it's easier right. to say I'm moving to be closer with family. And band kids, we're all humans. They're the same way. They're going to write down something that makes you kind of ease off and cut them some slack. So it's really usually, it's not in your best interest to actively pursue that. Um, if a kid comes to you, I think it's fine to ask if they say, Mr. Lenny, I'm thinking about this. You know, it's okay to talk to them. Um, the second part of this is when a kid says they are quitting, say, Mr. Lenny, I'm going to quit band next year. They're done. They're simply just informing you. You're wasting your breath. You will not change their mind. So do not either scold them for quitting. <laughs> Don't say, how dare you quit my band program? Right. You know, they're simply respectful enough to come tell you. You know, so Mr. Lenny, um, I looked at my schedule and my work schedule and my family life, and I'm just not going to do band next year. So don't jump into scolding them. Um, small town, and even a larger town, you're going to run into those kids and those parents in town. Um, what terms do you want to be on? <laughs> you no, know, do you want to be point. you want to be seen for the rest of your life as the guy that lost their cool and threw the clipboard across the office and told the kid, "How dare you quit my program after all the work we've put in together?" And I, I've known directors who've told <laughs> this is the God's honest truth. If, because it came from the director. He tells it, yeah, do you just want to quit band and be like all those other losers in the student body? I was in how, one of those bands. Yeah. How brutal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just because a kid doesn't take band, they're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe the director was a loser. And I always try to tell them, I, I always try. I do tell them the door is open. I never had this, you quit and you're gone forever mentality. So if you come back to me in a year or two years and say, Mr. Lunny, 
hey, my schedule's working out. Could I have an opportunity to play in the band again? I said, yeah, we have an open door. And I always tell them, said, if I see you in the hall, I'm going to say hi to you. You know, if I see you around town, it's okay to give a little wave. You know, said, this is, there's nothing personal happening here. There's nothing personal. Right. It's for me, it's personal of what I do for a living. For you, it's personal because it's your decision. But between us, it's not a personal issue. <laughs> we're still good. Yeah, we're still yeah. good. We're still good. Um, and, uh, and I've had some kids who've come back, you know what I mean? That they've quit for a year. It doesn't happen very often. Generally, if they quit band, they're gone, you know, because it's just right. such a process of improvement each year. They don't want to come back as a junior and play like a eighth grader, you know, that, that hardly ever happens. Uh, but it does happen. It does happen. Well, stop me if this starts winding off. But I also think what message are you sending to everybody else? In your group, if you've created culture, which we've talked about, or um, if one person, how do I say this the right way? The other kids need to know that we're going to be fine. Yes. You know, ooh, ooh, somebody's quitting. Okay. We're yeah. fine. Oh, let me stop you for a second because it brought sure. up a thought. <laughs> I love the, uh, and every director out there is going to laugh at this. Hey, Mr. Lunny. Everybody's quitting next year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that expression, every, and I'm thinking, yeah, you and your two best friends that eat lunch together are quitting band. Right. But yeah, so you're right. It's not everybody's quitting this year, but go on, go on. <laughs> well, my, my point is, do you, what message, let me back up to make sure I'm, I'm clear okay. on this. If, if we make such a big deal and beg and you know, go into panic mode over one kid that has to make a life decision. What message are we sending to all the other kids? Oh, so without him, we're nothing or we're still here. Yeah. You know, yeah. Love on us. But I also think in a positive standpoint and in a positive culture, your, your, your group is bigger than one, one person. I don't care if they're first chair. I don't care if they were, all region, all state, if they are moving on, that's okay. We're moving yeah. on too. Yeah, it's perfectly okay. You know, it's, uh, yeah, you can, you can kind of uh, create a lot of havoc by trying to, you know, stir up those waters. What are we going to do now? We don't have this. You know, if your trumpet solos quits, you put the solo on trombone and you're done, you know, and it's, right. you miss the kid and the kid was a good kid, but I always instilled to my group and that they can, I mean, it's kind of a dark humor kind of moment, but I'd always tell them, said, you know what? If I fell off the podium and died of a heart attack right now, there'd be someone else up on this podium tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's the truth. You know, the next day that they're going to have rehearsal. <laughs> There's right. someone, the assistant's going to step up. They're going to hire somebody. Um, it works that way. And I remember it's not really quitting band, but I remember telling my uh, great mentor, Greg Miller, my senior year, because we had such a strong senior class. You know how we all think our senior class is the strongest? Sure. And I said, what are you going to do next year? Because we all, all of us are uh, graduating. And he, he just kind of looked at me with a poker face and goes, make about 30 consecutive sweepstakes. And oh, wow. he did. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> he retired after 36 years. And so, but you that's know, kind every, of my, yeah. that's a, a point I'm trying to make here is yeah. I just knocked my microphone all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> Big picture, small picture. Yeah. Yeah. To, to us as band directors, each class, each band is like a float in the parade and we see the whole parade. Right. To the kids, all they see is their float. They they don't really know what's going to happen 10 years from now. I mean, they'll be married, have kids, have whatever. They don't know what happened 10 years ago. They were in kindergarten <laughs> or, or less. Um, so agree. we've got to try to figure that out. That uh, I but just you know, That's stuck in my mind forever that you, I'll make 30 consecutive sweepstakes. <laughs> when I left Wiley, I thought I'd done a really great job. Man, we had a great band. Um, the next director came in and made five years of consecutive sweepstakes with every band in the entire cluster. You know, they didn't miss me that much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm I'm trying to say that we it's bigger than one. It's bigger than and one. We can't shortchange all these other kids. Somebody's gonna step up. Yeah, yeah. It's time it next happens. man next man or woman step up. Let's go. Yeah. But you have to be encouraging to them to go, well, you're not so and so. But yeah. I guess we'll go with you. Yeah. And, and we sometimes may not say that, but if we're, 
if we're begging and if we're, oh my gosh, what are we? It's going to translate to everybody else. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that was my point. I can, I'll yeah. back down now. No, no, that's a, that's a good point that they, we do, we need to realize and the students need to realize that uh, the program's bigger than one person. You know, I granted if half the band quits, it's going to have an impact. You know, sure. but if one, you know, there's going to be a certain percentage of kids quitting. Our job as a director is to try to set up a, like one of our past podcasts, you know, we talk about student leadership, et cetera. And we try to set it up where less kids quit, but I would dare say it's hard to find a band that has 95% retention all the way through their senior year. I think that would be, you get to really tiny, small schools and there's more retention because there's less kids and there's more individual pressure. There's one right. little one I know of had, has every single kid in beginner band this year, all seven wow. fifth graders. All, all seven. seven. <laughs> all seven. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got every single kid. It's not forced by the school, but every kid's taken band. And uh, I would dare say, too, you know, he said it's bigger than one person. This is a hard lesson. It took me a long time to learn this, Derek. Simply teach the kids that are in front of you. Yeah. Quit I've worrying about it. the one. Quit worrying about all the kids. It's okay to think about it. It's okay to make plans to make less kids quit. But you can't just just – dwell on it because you've got all these wonderful kids who have signed up and they've given up part of their life <laughs> to be in your right. program. You think about a senior in band, you went all the way through. I went all the way through. Think of how many hours of your life were band related from sixth grade to 12th grade. Exactly. They've given exactly. up a chunk of their life to dedicate it. And we as teachers have given up a chunk of our life to, to dedicate ourselves to this band program. So there's a sense of mutual respect there. Um, but, you know, we can't just dwell on the fact that someone quit. We've got to uh, love and teach those kids that are in front of us and push forward, you know, change what you need to change. Okay, let me ask you something. This is a great conversation. And I also think it's you know, if I wanted to, I'd dive off into the difference between leadership and politics again, because a lot of talking people into staying feels like politics yeah. as opposed to, to leadership. But um, inevitably, there is going to be in your career somebody that you feel like that just blindsided me. I did not see that coming. I would have never guessed it. <laughs> so what do we do with the blind side? How do we? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there there are those moments when the kid and teachers will know what I'm talking about. The kid that is a band kid, a choir kid, an orchestra kid, just comes up and says, uh, "I just want to enjoy my senior year. Yeah. I'm I'm going to quit band. I'm going to quit orchestra. I just want to be with my friends in band. It's like I just want to be with my friends in the stands. You do get blindsided by those guys, and that's the hardest ones not to take personal because." Right. Uh, you know, you don't dig in too deep with it because they've just kind of given up. Maybe they just don't agree with the culture of your band. Maybe they're just being polite and they really don't like what you're doing in the band. They don't like the direction the band's going. Um, it's a fine line of, and this is going to quite part out loud, Derek. Here it comes. It's the fine line about how many rehearsal hours are you requiring of your program? Oh, you know, that's, yeah. that's the quiet part out loud. Uh, more rehearsals, not necessarily better band. You know, you've got to find that that moment. To, there's bands that do the full eight hours and absorb every loophole they can on weekends to enter three contests and warm up at three marching contests. So they have four extra hours of rehearsal plus three run throughs of the show with adjudication. And that happens. I'm not making that up, you know, and more respect to those guys because those guys have lots of kids in their band program. But if you're in this 1A, 2A, 3A situation, I dare you to do the full eight hours after school and see what happens. You know, huh. there's those kids have a lot more going on, you know, uh, forced upon them. Maybe, right. Maybe they decide to do it, but you know, they, they've got to show a pig at the ag show or the County fair and, and you've got area marching it. That, that becomes a problem. That's not as sure. big a problem in a six, a high school, you know? I, so all I, my I, small school guys and, and most of the rest of our, this is very generic, Derek, but most of the rest of our country, their band programs are more like our 1A, 2A, 3A, maybe 4A bands than they are like our 5A, 6A bands. Like in Oklahoma, there's some powerhouses, but there's only maybe four. There's right. more in Region 5 in Texas. There are powerhouses in 5A, 6A. And those bands are incredible bands, but there's a lot more bands in the nation 
that we would call 1A, 2A, 3A bands. Uh, let's say the school population is 450, you know, and the band is 50 to 80 in that range. And those are the ones you've got to be real careful. You know, the kids will quit because maybe you're requiring too much out of them. That's a hard right. decision, but you've got to find that that point, okay? And like you said, taking it personal, a lot of times the reason they quit has nothing to do with band. It could be just they want to be with their friends in volleyball, you know, or, right. they, or they want to be with their friends in ag class and learn how to weld or do auto body or whatever. Um, it, it has nothing to do with band. A lot of times it has nothing at all to do with band. So you can't really take it personal. A good friend of mine, uh, Jim Rhodes, uh, he, he's kind of a Yoda of band directors here in Texas. Uh, his most uh, famous to me is uh, he has both a band hall named after him and a lunch special at the cafe. There's a Jim Rhodes plate. <laughs> right. Yeah. So how many band directors? I was more impressed with the lunch special than I was the, uh, you know, because the, there's lots of directors who have band halls named after them. But who in the world has a lunch plate named after them? Yeah, but he... He has a, one of those service bells, like you see at hotels, you go ding, 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 ding. And mm-hmm. uh, he said, it's this stuck with me. He said, when a kid would quit, he'd give himself a few minutes after all this happened to think on it. And then he'd reach over and go, ding. And that was the moment to where he had to move on and let go. To him, as Pavlov's dog. You know what I mean? He had That's that little service right. bell. And when the kid quit, it's like, we went through all the process. The kid's quitting. Ding. Okay, time mm-hmm. to go teach. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, wisdom in his, the way he did Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just think you waste so much energy. Okay. I'll say this carefully. There are very few arguments you can make to a teenage boy who's following a girl around. <laughs> that that logic doesn't always work. At some point, you just have to go, okay, ding, yeah. Yeah, you just have to have to ring the bell. <laughs> just go ding. <laughs> well, we're done with this. Okay. And, you know, and going back to talking about, you know, just work with the kids that are in front of you. Just embrace the ones who are that they just quietly show up and just crush it every day. There's kids yeah. in our band programs that they never say more than two words. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I, th- I think that kid hates band because I never mm-hmm. see him hardly smile. And I, and they never say anything to anyone, but. They're here every day, and they end up being a senior. And uh, there was one, and I, I won't say the name because uh, they're still in the area. And I really thought I was a flute player, and I really thought that she hated band because she just just always had a look of discontent on her face a little bit. You know, it wasn't bad attitude. I always played her part well. It was a flute of my top honor band. And then she sent me a – the seniors, I always write a letter to each senior and put it – give it to them at the band banquet, and I give them a personal letter. And she sent one back, and she talked about how band was the most important thing of her school activities and how she loved band and how it shaped her life. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a kid that I was actually expecting her to quit every year. I really was. Right. I thought she would come in and go, oh, I'm not going to do this. So don't forget those quiet ones that come in. They just crush it every day. They might and not I think be the, you're, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I said, they might not be the world's best player necessarily, or the best marcher, but they're there. Sometimes other ones with smiles in their faces. They laugh at my stupid dad jokes. They snap to attention, maybe a little better than your top kids. You know what I mean? When you call them to attention, band is them. You know, they're the golden retrievers of the band program. And, uh, but you know, They might not stand out as stars, but yet, you know, when a star quits, you've got to remember all those other ones that are waiting to be stars. (laughs) They're waiting for a moment, you know. I know in the trumpet section, you're a trumpet player. We're like piranhas, man. We we just circle waiting for the the first chair solo player. Make a mistake, man. Make a mistake. Quit band. I dare you. (laughs) Talk about a negative band culture, but it's the fiery furnace of ego. (laughs) But that's... This is kind of circling back to, I, I, I guess this is just really in my heart today that I was that kid that band was my family. It was mm-hmm. a safe place to be. Band made the rest of the day tolerable, if that's yes. not too much of an exaggeration. It's not. And I, it was where I belonged. And so, Mr. Miss... Music educator, why would you disrespect those kids and make them feel less important chasing after somebody that doesn't even want to be there? Right. Right. So sorry if that went too far, too deep. No, but. that's not, that, 
that's not too deep at all. That is exactly the truth. Uh, the, uh, focus on the kids who choose band. Choose them back. Right. <laughs> you know, choose them back. <laughs> choose them back. You know, don't don't just take them for granted. You know, uh, I would like to try. I, I hope I was good at this. I tried. I would like to. I would always take like two or three names of my quiet kids that crush it every day, and I'd write it somewhere in my clipboard, and I would try to catch them doing something really good during a rehearsal. And so I'd try to mention at least two or three of those kids, like, you know, yeah, hey, John, that was really incredible, that drill move, great job, said, I can tell you know exactly what you're doing. It took about two seconds, two, three seconds, but the rest of the ones who are the quiet ones that are crushing it, they kind of go, he notices he saw. It's not. It's not all about the star solo saxophone player with a microphone at the front of the field, you know. It's <laughs> it's it's uh it's not about the color guard captain. It's not about the drum major. It's uh you know it's he does acknowledge that it's the the strength of an army is in its infantry, <laughs> right? You know that's where the strength of the army is, and, and the I, strength of I, a band is in your infantry. Is those quiet kids, you know? I think it's a simple fact that the ones who the loud ones get noticed. Oh yeah, they demand and, it. And and I'm not taking away any I'm not putting talent in this equation at all. I'm not saying they're not talented, but sometimes they're just loud enough that everybody goes, All right, we see you. Yeah. But Hey, I was that kid, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't quit band, but I was that kid. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just loud so enough important. to be noticed. <laughs> There's enough people that don't scream for the attention, but they're all in. Yeah. So anyway, there's my heart today just running out there. Sorry. That's right. That's all right. <laughs> so so tell us one more time. Pat us on the back, Grandpa Band Director Mike. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if somebody quits, life goes on. Yeah. Band goes on. Your Work band is your, bigger than band is bigger than one phases. person. <laughs> yeah. Work through your personal phases. The begging. The, uh, I don't care to, I just want to work this out and find a resolution one way or the other. Yeah. And sometimes the, we've said it 18 times. I'm going to say it one more time. Don't make it bigger than it has to be. Right. If they're set on doing this, you know what? I, I think that. If somebody comes to you to talk to you about it, then it's worth talking about. But if somebody just says, I'm quitting, mine's made up, you can't change it, smartest thing I can say is, okay. That's right. <laughs> if they just say they're quitting and they don't come to you to talk about it, it's not in your best interest to track them down. It, it's just not. <laughs> you know, and I, I, maybe if it's a little, if it's a 1A school, 2A school, maybe you have to do that just to get people on the field. So I'm not going to, I respect that. You know, it's a, I worked 1A, 2A for 13 years as a band director. So I can kind of see that point. But if your band's stable enough, just, just let them go and just say anything else you say. I mean, thank you for your time you put into the program. I appreciate you, you know. Right. Just leave it at that, you know. And best wishes. Yeah, best wishes. Don't let the doorknob hit you. No, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) And resist the urge to say, let's talk about addition by subtraction. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Sometimes that'd be a whole other podcast. Yeah. Sometimes (laughs) there's kids that we, uh, yeah, never mind. Okay, yeah, addition by subtraction. (laughs) We'll leave it at that, Derek. (laughs) Let's quit the conversation while we're (laughs) Yeah, let's quit it while we're on a higher road at the moment. The other one needs to be more around cigars and uh, adult beverages. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, my brother. Well, I hope we find time for some of those fireside chats. That's right. Um, we'll do it. Have a great week, my friend. You too. It's been fun talking to you, Derek. All right.